this one. Okay. It's not live, so we'll edit it. Okay, know. okay. Ready? All right. Rolling. Officer, please give us uh, your name and position, please. I'm Trooper Standifer with the Texas Department of Public Safety. I work in the position of State Trooper. Can you spell your name, please? S-T-A-N-D as in David, I-F-E-R. First name, Richard. Okay, Officer, uh, what happened here today? I received a call that a plane had uh, made a crash landing. Uh, I came out to the scene. Uh, I investigated the scene, looked at some basic things. The uh, passenger of the plane is still awake and he's able to tell me what happened. He stated that they took off from Hooks Airport. They immediately noticed a uh, sudden loss of power, at which time they turned around to try to go back to Hooks, but was unable to. So apparently just past this tree line or brush line, there's an open field. They were going to try to make an emergency landing there. The plane continued to lose altitude, at which time they believe it may have struck the berm. There's a raised berm right there. It looks like the landing gear clipped that, and then it flipped upside down. So they were not able to make the, the landing in the open field, but they were able to get it down in time uh, where there weren't any casualties. Just the general condition on the pilot? The general condition, I, I believe uh, the, the pilot was coherent. They took him for possible head injuries, but he was awake and coherent. The passenger, uh, it doesn't seem like he has any life-threatening injuries. Uh, he has not been transported to the uh, hospital. The uh, pilot, I believe, is uh, right around 69 to 70 years old, and I believe the passenger is uh, a few years younger than that. It was advised to me that the passenger is the owner of the plane. It's a 2011 Capella two-stroke twin. So uh, that's the basic gist of the, the uh, information on the plane. There's two people inside. There, there were two people in it. They were both secured via four-point harnesses uh, in the plane. What's the condition of the plane like right now? Uh, though, let me see here. It's upside down. So if we were to right it, I believe the right wing is broken off of it. There's severe damage to the very, very front of the, the uh, nose of the plane. And the landing gear are bent, which would be consistent with them striking uh, something. Uh, if I had to guess, it would be the berm and then the plane probably flipped over upside down. So I think they came in as the altitude was being lost, tried to get it down as close as they could, may have struck the berm, and then it flipped the plane over, and uh, one of the wings actually broke off of it, but the actual fuselage is still intact. Okay. Was the fire department here? Was there any sort of fire? It, there, there's not, but I know when I walked up on the vehicle, or the plane, I'm sorry, the craft, I can smell gas. So they're always called as a preventative measure. I don't know how much fuel that that plane can carry, but they want to be on scene in case a spark does occur, which will uh, catch it on fire. And were you, either of the victims pinned in the wreckage, or were they both able to get out on their own? They were both able to get out on their own because they have four port harnesses in it, and uh, at which time they were fairly close to the ground. There is no severe encroachment in the fuselage area, which leads me to believe they were able to get out.
And from, from what you've seen of the scene, are you surprised there were more serious injuries based on what you saw? Uh, the, 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 the nose of the plane has severe damage. The actual fuselage where the passengers are, it's still in pretty good shape. Okay. So I was hoping that it would be someone uh, coherent enough to talk to me about it, and it was. Uh, from what I was told, the pilot, which is uh, certified to fly the plane, he has roughly about 7,800 hours. He was coherent as well, but uh, I'm not sure if he had any type of a visible scarring or maybe some blood showing. They said they were going to take him just to be sure. Are they local residents? I, I didn't get that information. I did get that information. I did get the information that the uh, passenger owns the plane. And they're in at the hospital? Yes, uh, Herman Memorial is where they took the pilot. Are they related? They are not. They just met each other uh, not too long ago, and they chose to fly out to an event today. And uh, the lady in blue, where, where is she from? The one that just rolled up? Uh, FAA? Okay. Yes, I believe FAA just rolled up on stage. So what goes on from here in terms of what? She'll do an assessment on the plane to try to determine what the cause of the crash was. The, the uh, passenger is still coherent. We'll be able to talk to her, which will give her a clearer understanding of what happened, at which time she said she would notify some certain entity. I wasn't sure by the initials that she gave, and the, I guess they'll make the determination whether they'll release the plane to him or have it uh, uh, removed for safekeeping for further investigation. And the type of the plane, could you spell uh, the type of the plane? It is a C-A-P-E-L-L-A -L -L -A Capella. It, it carries two passengers and it's a two-stroke twin. Uh, I asked him if possible oil pressure could go down. He advised me that that has a fuel mix of oil and gas, so there's no such thing as losing oil pressure in a two-stroke two -stroke airplane. Okay. And someone described it to us as homemade and experimental. Would you know anything about that? Uh, I believe it was homemade, but they okay. didn't build it. They he bought it that ah, way. Gotcha. But uh, it, it looked like a professionally built plane to me, but this is not the first time I've worked a crash on a quote-unquote homemade plane, but he advised me that it was homemade. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you so much for your time. Okay, guys. Appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thanks for Thank your time.